I dropped out of college, bummed around Mexico, came back to my hometown in the early 70s. I needed a job. I heard about this place called Young Radiator they were hiring. I went down there. I'd seen this place many times. Old, brick, soot, blackened walls. It was like perfectly preserved from the Middle Ages, maybe the Dark Ages. <laughs> Hydraulic hissing, acid leaking from the ceiling. Dark. And there were all these guys hanging out the window, yelling at women a block away, I love you, baby. <laughs> Marry me. Meet me at the bar at midnight. <laughs> oh, I looked at these guys, I thought, if I work here for 20 years, I'm going to end up just like these guys. <laughs> so I walked into the personnel office. Fill out the application. The guy says, yeah, we need some help in the summer. <clears throat> You're hired tomorrow under one condition. You gotta get a haircut. Owner hates long hair. The guy even hates long sideburns. I'm telling you, he's a freak about this. I said, what are you talking about? My hair's not that long. Those guys in the factory with hair down the middle of the back. What about those guys? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're in a union. Can't touch them. You work 60 days, 12 weeks, you do what you like. Until then, get a haircut or no job. I thought, we'll see about that. Who is the hipster who's happening in our town? He's tearing up the chicks with the message that uh, he lays down. And who is the coolest guy? That is a what I am. You know it's fast talking, slow walking, good looking, mohair Sam. So I went to Woolworths. Thought, this is bullshit. I'm not cutting my hair for these guys. No way. So I went to Woolworths. I was looking for a beetle wig. And I, I pulled out a beetle wig and put it on, but it was from the white album era. It was way too long. So I found a monkey's wig. I put it on. It looked just right. I walked into Young Radiator the next day in that personnel office. I thought, there's no way he's going to know. He can't possibly buy this act. I walk in, he goes, all right. <laughs> Looking sharp now. <laughs> so we, we, I walk in the factory. He introduces me to my foreman, a guy named Rudy Tiano. We called him Big Whistle Rudy. I remember very distinctly because he was a referee in, in our basketball games, and he had this wild way of blowing his whistle. He had big horn rim glasses, a crew cut. He takes a look at me. He says, DeMarc, you say? Are Frank's boys? Oh, yeah. I know Frank, all his brothers, good ball players, all of them. You're a ball player, weren't you? St. Catherine's basketball player, right? Am I wrong or am I right? <laughs> You're right. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> yeah, you're looking pretty clean cut these days, you know? He's still looking like a ball player, like one of these riffraff guys in the factory. For God's sakes, these guys, Jesus. What's happened to everybody? All these guys would rather go to some crazy rock and roll show than see a baseball game? Jeez, the whole goddamn country's gone to hell. Am I wrong or am I right? <laughs> you could be right, Rudy. You're goddamn right I could be right. So Rudy gave me this job. I was going to have this cart. I was going to deliver supplies to the machinists and, and in the factory. So all day long, he would just walk next to me and he'd be talking about the glory days of baseball and bitching about the long hairs and what's happening in the country. I would just nod my wig head, <laughs> push my cart, nod, and push. <laughs> this went on for weeks. I got to know some of the long haired guys in the factory. They realized what was happening. We'd go down to the Root River. We did our sandwiches, watch the carp jump for entertainment. I'd take off the wig, and sometimes I'd put it on a stick 
and we'd start singing Beatles songs, you know. <laughs> Paperback Rider. <laughs> One day I was walking back in. I had to put the wig back on. The hair was starting to get long after two weeks. After two months, it was. And, the, and these long hairs were sticking out. And one of the guys, hey, hey, stick, tuck your hair in, Ringo. So, so after that, that became my name with all those guys, Ringo. But the weird thing was, none of the management knew it. Nobody knew it. And I thought, it must be some kind of a male thing. They just don't want to check out a guy in a factory too closely. <laughs> well, they had a two-week shutdown in the middle of the summer. And I wanted to work as many weeks as I could, as fast as I could to get out of there. So I said, yeah, I volunteered to do this two-week shutdown. And what I had to do was just clean the place up and paint all these things with white paint. And after two weeks, this head was so covered with grease and white paint, it was splattered, and I never washed it. It was like this surreal hard hat of hair <laughs> designed by Salvador Dali. It was unbelievable. And even with the white paint, they still didn't know it was a wig. <laughs> How could they not know? <laughs> so I kept working. One day, a guy from the front office walks up and he's kind of grave and he says, Jeff, uh, really appreciated your work. You've been a good worker here. And uh, sorry, we're going to have to lay you off here. You have 50 days, and of course, you know you need to have 60 to get in the union, so we have to lay you off first. And I said, no. Hey, look, man, I've been counting. Today is my 60th day. He said, no, no, we have your start date. I said, no, I worked the two-week shutdown, remember? That's 10 extra days. So he, he runs down the office. He comes back. I had taken off one half day. He says, 59 and a half ain't 60. I'm sorry you're laid off. And I went, oh, man. What the hell is that? Is that right? Sons of bitches. Sons of bitches. <laughs> Some bitches. So I go up to the union steward. Long-haired, Harley-riding guy in the factory with this big Fu Manchu. I told him, he says, that's bullshit, Ringo. <laughs> We're going to the wall for you, man. So all day long, they start fighting it out. He comes back and tells me, yeah, we're getting somewhere. End of the day, he comes up to me. He says, we beat their ass. Welcome to the union, Ringo. You're working tomorrow. <laughs> Next day, I walk in. <laughs> Hair is down to my shoulders. Rudy Tiano says, he looks at me and goes, Where'd you get that hair? Oh, what the hell is that? I go, oh, oh. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, that's wrong. That's just wrong. I didn't think you went in for this, this, this long hair crap. Oh my God, your dad's gotta be sick. Oh, all your uncles, what are they saying about you? Jesus Christ. I didn't think you were like these guys. My God. Oh, goddamn, everybody, everybody's gone to hell. Jesus, what happened to you, DeMarc? I said, Rudy, what happened to me? What happened to everything, man? It's a different time. Six, seven years ago, you know, people got a little out there outside of Racine, Wisconsin, you know? Hendrix and Dope and Vietnam, the Beatles. Things got a little weird out there. You know, and, and you're bitching about those long hairs in the factory and everything. Some of those guys were in Vietnam. Do you know that? Some of those guys saw their friends blown up, and they've got long hair, and you think that they care about this? It's just a different world. All of my friends would rather go see Hendrix or, or Led Zeppelin or something and then go to some ball game like you're always telling us. It's just a different world, Rudy. And he, and he backed up. He says, now, wait a minute. I didn't mean to say anything about our boys uh, in Vietnam. You know, I, I might have that wrong. And if, I, if, if I'm wrong about that, I'm sorry. I don't mean to speak about our veterans like that. I, I, I'm, you might have a point. But you're wrong about baseball. You are wrong about baseball. Baseball is going to outlast Red Zeppelin and all that crap that you think is so great. Why do you think President Roosevelt in World War II said baseball's got to keep going, huh? Why is that? Because baseball's important. 
Baseball helps people's spirits. And he knew it. Baseball continued in World War II. You'll see. You'll see someday. Baseball's going to outlast Red Zeppelin and that crap. It's bigger. You'll see, Mark. Hey, look at that. Listen. It's crap. It's crap. I told you it's crap. It's crap. It's crap. Sorry, you Dad. see what I'm talking about? <laughs> it ain't that good. <laughs>